Hi Pre-K, this is Miss Clark and I'm here to read you a story called Cross a Bridge. It's written by Ryan Ann Hunter and illustrated by Edward Miller. It's a little shiny on the front. All right, so bridges stretch across bays and rivers, streams and puddles. Bridges cross valleys and gorges too. Bridges used to be made from just about anything, rocks and logs and even animal skins. Nature made the first bridges. A river wore away rock, forming an arch. This was the first stone arch bridge. A tree fell across a stream Someone chasing an animal scrambled across it. This was the first wood bridge. So here are some natural bridges that just happened because of nature. Some bridges floated on animal skins, blown up with air like balloons. A long time ago, kings sent their armies into battle across this kind of bridge. We still use pontoon bridges, only now the pontoons are usually made of hollowed out concrete. So the first pontoon bridges, which is what these are called, were made of animal skins blown up with air, and now they're hollowed out concrete. Bridges need to be strong. Some wood bridges were covered to keep the rain and snow from rotting the wood. You can still find old covered bridges on quiet country roads. When you pass through, Hold your breath and make a wish. So this bridge goes across a river and it has walls and a roof to keep it safe from the weather. Trains travel over special bridges called trestles. The, bri the braces crisscross underneath the tracks. They fill the gorge with fantastic patterns. Look at all these patterns that trestle bridge makes. Suspension bridges are just the opposite. Steel cables crisscross from towers above the bridge. These bridges look like they're hanging right from the sky. So you can see the trestles have crisscrosses underneath and these suspension bridges have the crisscrosses above. In Colorado, you can cross a bridge more than 1,000 feet above the Arkansas River. So this bridge is very high above the water underneath. Beam bridges are long and flat. They rest on sturdy concrete pilings and reach across lakes and bays. The longest bridges in the world are beam bridges. One stretches more than 24 miles across Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans. You can't see from one side to the other, so it's so long you can't even see the other end when you're starting out. It goes all the way across the whole lake. New kinds of bridges are being designed all the time. Bridges are busy. They carry cars full of people. They carry trucks, buses, and trains too full of people and all kinds of things that people need. Some cities have lots of bridges to get the cars and trucks, the buses and trains in and out. So I think this is a city that looks like where the city that we live in, right? New York City. We have a lot of bridges going in and out of our city. If you drive through Paris, you'll have more than 30 bridges to choose from. So Paris has a lot of bridges. Some bridges open up because ships and boats on the river below are too tall to go under. Then the cars, trucks, buses, and trains just have to wait while the ships and boats pass through. Then the bridge closes and the cars and trucks, buses, and trains cross over it again. So this is a bridge like one that goes over the Gowanus Canal that a lot of you might have seen in Brooklyn near our school. Sometimes it goes up and you have to wait for it to come back down after the boat goes through. But bridges aren't just for crossing. Bridges are for sitting and fishing and wishing.
So sometimes people just stand or sit on a bridge and wait and think. Thank you for reading this book with me, Pre-K.